What's going on guys? Last time we've built for these little device right here um, and today we're going to look at what exactly we can do with these because there is a few things that are now unlocked since you actually build to mobile phone uh, and the first one we're going to be checking out today is the gyroscope. Now if you don't know what the gyroscope is let me just pull that scene really quickly and we're going to have a look at what the gyroscope is. So basically you have some kind of device like that inside of your phone that just um, that just records exactly how is the phone oriented in the real world. You see this being used in a lot of applications such as bubble level which is going to help you determine if your shelf are on level or if your pool table is on, on the level as you can tell right here. Those are real world example of what the gyroscope could be used for. Now in our case we're going to be using it to orient ourselves in the real world. Um, and let me just show you the scene I have right here. It's the same exact scene as we had in the previous video where I show you how to build this to the phone. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look around the scene just by pivoting our phone basically. Now before we get started let me just say uh, right here that not every phone have a gyroscope. Uh, well most of them do nowadays but if it's a really old phone they don't have a gyroscope and of course this is not going to work since you need the sensor to have this work. Uh, right now I've googled my phone I'm using a Google Pixel. Under the sensor you can see that there is the gyro right here. It's only called gyro here, but it might be called gyroscope on your spec. So now that we know our device is supported, let me go in Unity, create a new C-sharp script, and this one is gonna be called gyro controls, or just gyro control like this. Let's open it up in Visual Studio, and we're gonna start laying down the basic code we need. Now guys, this is really easy stuff, and you're gonna see that Unity pretty much does everything for us already. So let me start by laying down the basic stuff we need. We need a boolean that knows if our gyroscope is enabled or not. So I'll just call this private bool gyro enabled and also a, a structure of that gyroscope. So private gyro and I'll just call it gyro. Now in my start, I will make sure to actually just enable this. And I'll actually do that in another function because we've got more logic um, coming real soon. So I'll do a private bool enable gyro just like this. What I'll do in the start is I'll say gyro enable is going to equal enable gyro. So this way, if we're not able to enable gyro, if it's not being supported, we're going to have false in gyro enable and we're not going to be running the update that we should be running. Now to enable a gyroscope in Unity, there is something really easy to do. It's only a two step thing really. You start by if statement and you say, well, is the system supporting it? So if system info supports the gyroscope, if it does, you are going to enter a if statement and simply say gyro is equal to input dot gyro. As simple as that. And then afterward, you need to enable it, which is a simple boolean. So gyro dot enable is equal to true. At this point, you've got all you need. You can simply do a return true out of that function. And if you were not able to actually get um, in here, then you got to make sure that you return false because we're returning a boolean. At that point, if we made it here, Gyro enable is true, and if we made it here, it is false. Now something that is really annoying though when you actually develop for the gyroscope is that the only way to test it out is on your actual device because your, your computer does not have a gyroscope and you can't really emulate it unless you plug in your phone and you just do the, the remote connection with Unity, which we're not going to do right here since it is a lot of trouble to go through. Uh, instead, we're going to be creating our mechanic around this. But let me just say right here that this is all you actually need. And if you need to play around with the values in here, let's, let's actually create our update right away. So private void update. The values that you play with are called attitude. So gyro.attitude and that's it really. That's, that's the value you need to actually know how your phone is oriented in the real life. And this is a quaternion so it actually returns you a rotation. Now for the sake of actually giving this a purpose, we're going to be creating a mechanic around it. A mechanic that allows you to actually just look around. So if you just want to stick around and um, write down this code with me, we are going to create a private game object that is going to be a camera container. And then just below it, we're going to make sure we also save the rotation. So private quaternion rotation. With these two new fields, we're going to go down at the start and actually transfer our camera uh, make sure our camera is actually a children of another object so we can keep our original rotation safe. So we're going to say camera container is equal to a new game object. So we're creating a new object. Let's actually call it camera container as well. When you send in a, um, when you send in a single string parameter to your 
game object constructor, it is simply going to create an empty game object and then rename it. So right now we have an empty game object um, at 0, 0, 0, and it is being actually called camera container. Now what we're going to do is actually move him over to where the camera is. So camera container transform position is equal to transform dot position, assuming we're putting this on the camera. And then afterward, let's just say transform set parent. So we're going to take the camera and actually set it as a children of the object we've just created. Just like this. Now at this point, we have a new object that wraps around the camera. Let me just book this in game so you guys can see. We have the main camera right here. I'm going to put my Garo script on it, on the camera. Then when I press on play, it is now right here as a children of camera container. At this point, we still do not have our mechanic. We only managed to create an object that is the parent of our camera. What we're going to do right here is whenever we enable the gyroscope, we are going to create some kind of rotation already set. We're going to say camera container dot transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and then let's do a zero. Oops. And then just after that, we're going to say rotation is equal to a new quaternion. 0, 0, 1, 0. So this way, whenever we start our gyroscope, whenever we actually try to have the scene set up, it's going to be pointing in front of us. You'll see what I mean in a second when we actually try it out. And okay, so that's all we need in the enable garrow. Now let's move over to the update because we want to be using that uh, garrow.attitude function. Let's do if the garrow is enabled, so if garrow enabled, we are going to reposition the local rotation of the camera. So transform local rotation and it's going to equal gyro dot attitude and we need to multiply it by our quaternion right here, our rotation quaternion. Now what this is going to give us if you go back in the game is absolutely nothing new and the reason is we do not have a gyroscope so we can't actually go through the update here. So what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to save everything, make sure we go under build settings, change our player setting. So let's go down here to, oh, we're not set on Android. Let me just double click on Android, switch the platform. Right now, we're just making sure that we can actually build to our phone. And if you need help building to your phone, if you need help building to your device, make sure you check out the other video we've done yesterday. Um, you can find it at the end of this video in the end slate. So. If you haven't done it already, just go check it out. Make sure you can build to your phone. Let me just change this to com and 3 k and then gyro. And once I do have my bundle identifier, I will go ahead and just do a build and run. And now we will swap over to the other camera and actually have a look at this when it's running. So we're about to get a build on my phone right here. I'll be holding this and also recording the screen so you guys can see. And here we go. So if I just unplug this real quick. As you guys see, I'm moving around and I can actually visualize my scene in the whole environment. My water shader is obviously not working properly, but as you can tell, as I'm moving my phone around, it's actually using the gyroscope to visualize the scene. And now it is up to you to create a game that is going to make people look stupid in public. So guys, if you enjoyed this, please leave me a like on the video. And if you did um, learn something, then just go ahead and leave a like on the video. I already said that. Okay, well, if you don't know how to build your phone, you can click right here. We've got the end slate, and it is going to bring you to the video we've done yesterday about how to build your phone and also all the problems you're going to run into. There's about like five of them, so you need a, you need a proper setup to have your phone running um, your games. So, yeah, just click on that video now. Also, subscribe. Yeah, you can also subscribe. That'd be nice.